Hello? Hey, JX, it's phone. It's ringing from somewhere, sir. I hear a detective. Where is it coming from? Fuck. Go away. I don't suppose it's just on her. Miss Melee, wake up. Sorry, Mr. Anyway, I got sleepy all of a sudden. It sounds like a lullaby. He used to love his child. I better find that cell phone fast. We determined that the crime scene is here. All that's left is to catch the killer. Where the fuck is it? I don't see it! Oh, <laughs> it's not in here. The ring is coming from somewhere in here, sir. Leave no stern unturned, Detective Gumtree. We must find it. It's gotta be in the trash can, right? Doesn't seem to be over here. Well, let's look somewhere else, sir. The ring is coming from somewhere around here. It's not in here, sir. Why would there be such a bad feeling about where we're going to find the phone? Doesn't seem like the phone got mixed in with the items and lost and found pile. I feel like the victim would have just dropped it somewhere, right, sir? Wonder if it might be inside this suitcase. No, here it sounds coming from it, sir. I don't suppose the culprit would have been so dumb as to try the secret twice. It's in there. We're up a long way. Somewhere in here. It doesn't seem to be over here. Where the fuck is it? It's an emergency control panel. Phone's the ring is coming from in here, sir. What? No, it can't be. This has got to be the victim's cell phone. Is whose locker is it, sir? It's Miss Tanero's. What? Just a lie. So, Mr. Edgeworth, how'd it go? Where do you find the phone? I found it in the flight attendant's room in Miss Tiniero's locker. What? But... Rhoda Tiniero. I don't know anything about the phone. It wasn't me. It wasn't me. Miss Von Carmen, is it? I suggest you arrest Miss Rhoda Tiniero right away. Wait, I have a theory. This is related to the incident with the keycard. When the killer went to steal the keycard, they conveniently snatched the cell phone and Miss Tenero's locker at the same time. Shut up, Von Karma. This relates to the keycard, all right? In the same way that we have zero proof that the killer did just that. The only voice that sings the truth is evidence. There is one bird we cannot ignore. What should I do? Francisca's right. I can't offer baseless conjectures at this point. All right then, why did the culprit take the cell phone from Agent Hex? It must have something very incriminating on it, or in it. Hold it. There's probably like a picture. Well now, Miles Edgeworth. It's not over yet. We have yet to figure out why the killer took the phone. What? Inside this phone lies the final piece of incriminating evidence that will point us to our killer. We need to examine the phone in more detail. It's nice and cracked too. The LCD is broken. Without a screen, you can't even place a call on this. The phone. It's a camera lens. Couldn't think of it. I wonder. How exactly was Agent Hitz going to preserve the crime scene of the smuggling? Francisco, I need you to confirm something. This cell phone. Can it take pictures? Mr. Edgeworth, I can't believe you don't know about this kind of basic stuff, sir. This looks like a very similar model to my own. 
And mine ta can take photos just fine. You think Agent Hex could have taken some pictures with this? In particular, pictures as evidence for a smuggling case. If so, I'd say there are many. There may be some very incriminating photos in here for our killer smuggler. But the photo all busted up, sir. You can take the fucking memory out of it. Super prosecutor can't repair a broken phone. Here. We'll find a way. Don't you worry about it. Uh, can I go back to sleep now? The LCD screens on the inside and outside are broken. That's for sure. But that's also reason enough to believe that the killer wasn't able to erase the data. What? What do you mean by that, Francisco? Looks like our killer isn't very familiar with electronics. The phone still rang when it called out, meaning the only, that only the LCD screens are broken. It's possible that the photos are still there inside, waiting to be accessed. All we need to do is transfer the data to my phone. Francisco, your phone, if you please. Very well. It's transferring. Transferring. All right, displaying it now. This is... Agent Hicks was all, was most certainly trying to obtain some evidence for his smuggling case. Hey, they all... Uh, a leaf red's nowhere in this pic, sir. This has no... This has no meaning as a piece of evidence in this murder case, right? She's right. There's not so much we can find out from this about Agent Hicks, Hicks as a killer, sir. Is this it? Is this the end? Is this really nothing in the phone that photo that we can use? The fact that all the suitcases are here in this photo is all odd. Agent Hicks was still alive at the time. So what exactly so odd that the suitcases haven't been used yet? As well as only pointing out things that are different from now and then. Your off-topic ramblings have put the attendant to sleep yet again, Miss Miles Edgeworth. Oh, oh good sleepyhead here, a rude awakening, a deafening objection, and a contradiction. What's all these? Hmm. Oh, they're a cargo ship from Virginia to Zhengfa. So the reason they were aren't here now is that they were dropped off in Zengfa. Mr. LeBlanc, can you tell me the context of the box contents of the boxes? Unfortunately there is no English written on them anywhere. One cluster of boxes is written in Borginian. It says blah 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 blah. It is cloth in English. Cloth. Could it be? Is this where the killer What? What is that scary face? Miss Melee? Yes. Appears that Agent Hicks was no ordinary investigator. He left us with a piece of evidence after all. A striking piece that will point out who this killer is. Ha! Huh. Maybe you shouldn't force your mistaken reading of a simple picture, Mr. Edgeworth. The Virginian car cargo in this piece of evidence will point straight to the killer. Because there's no way you would have known that's cloth inside of there without being able to read it. Dunker. What is that supposed to prove? The killer used this piece of cloth to wipe up the blood they had spilled. But there's no one there's one thing that bothered me this whole time. Where did it come from? And now I finally found my answer in this very photo. That cargo was unloaded and Zengfa had cloth written on it. In Borginian, that is. And this is where the killer grabbed a piece from the cleanup with the blood with. To clean up with blood with. I really like this fucking music though. That's right, the killer was someone someone who could read and understand Borginian. And the only crew member that fits that description is you, Miss Cami Melee. <laughs> That's pretty flimsy. The killer probably searched through all the boxes looking for something to use. When you're fa frantic, you don't care if the box is in English or Borginian. No, they would have grabbed the bed sheets. Objection! Sorry, but I cannot agree with your assessment of the killer's indiscriminate nature. What? There's no need for the killer to tear through boxes at random at all. If the killer supposedly could not comprehend Borginian. Well then... Logically, the killer would have opened this box first. Bed sheets. Take that. Hey! It says bed sheets in English right on the box, sir. Precisely. And bed sheets would be perfect for cleaning up blood, wouldn't you say? So what are you trying to say? 
But if you were the cri if I were the criminal, this box of bed sheets would have been what I would have spotted first. However, the killer chose to use some Borginian cloth. Because they knew it was going to be unloaded in Zeng Fa. That's why, because it would have gotten rid of the evidence by the time that this body would have been found out. There would have been no link to it at all. Do you have an explanation for that? The killer didn't want anyone to know that the real scene of the crime was in this cargo hold. So they were afraid to leave signs at the box uh, for the sheets had been opened. However, the Borginian cloth, well, that's a horse of a different color. Because the killer knew that it was going to be unloaded in the Republic of Zeng Fa. That's right. That is why the Borginian cloth was used. And the only Virginian reader on board who could make such a calculated decision is you, Kami Melee, and you alone. Mm. It would be very easy for us to confirm if any of the boxes were resealed. All we would have to do is contact the Zeng Fa authorities in time. We may even find another evidence to incriminate our killer within those boxes. So what do you say, Miss Melee? Why not confess to your crime here and now? Or would you rather wait and see what we find out from our investigation in Zeng Fa? Oh! No! No! Oh! Owing. Oh, not my kind of... Was Interpol. I couldn't stop it. I brought him here. He started taking pictures. I couldn't be found out. I was scared. I was in trouble. I... What a wholesome girl. She didn't do it on purpose. It wasn't it wasn't premeditated murder. It's all good. <laughs> Time to give her a plea deal. Easy peasy. Just, you know, huh, like manslaughter. We can get her down to like a pretty technical level. We can maybe get her out in a couple years. Call it good. We finished making all the arrangements to take the suds back then, sir. Very good detective. What was about the smuggling route? Did she say anything about that? They're taking her to the precinct da now. Hopefully we can get more out of her there. Whenever we even approached the topic, she started foaming at the mouth. It was scary, sir. She probably wasn't prepared to commit a murder all of a sudden. One thing is for sure, the ring behind this whole mess means serious business. Looks like there's a lot more to this case than meets the eye. Mr. Stretchworth. I just wanted to say how much I appreciated everything you did. Uh, uh, you did. Thank you very much. There was nothing. In fact, I should be the one thanking you for your cooperation. But truly, if it wasn't for you, I, I might not be here right now. Instead, I can continue to serve our passengers as a flight attendant. Um, I hope that... Well, please accept this as a token of my appreciation. That's... I see. You don't have to take it... Uh, if you don't want to. No, I mean, I would never turn down a lady's generous offer. Oh, thank you. I'm sure it will serve you very well. And remember, here at iFly Airlines, are always ready to serve, Mr. Edward. Thank you all, keep that in mind. Now I must bid you a farewell. May all your skies be blue no matter where you go. I can't believe we wound up investigating the whole day, sir. But boy, was it fun. Speak for yourself. My day was filled with earthquake elevators and false charges. By the way, where's Francisca? Oh, she's flying out uh, some custom paperwork for her departure. Filling out. Departure. Yeah, Ms. Von Karma is always really busy, sir. She's been flying from country to country to chase down some leads regarding her case. Detective, can you cancel the car I had you reserve earlier? You got it, sir. Trying to go talk to Miss Von Karma. Hope Springs Airport. Francisco. I thought I told you when you first landed, I had no time for idle chatter. I have no intention of wasting your time, however, it has been a while since we last met. I also have no time for such familiar reminiscences. Just who do you think I am? 
Francisca von Karma, a very proud prosecutor deserving of much respect. Until only a while ago, I was but a wretched mutt who was always losing to you. A dancing para parrot. Pirat? Pirouette? Pirouette? Living her life on the name and fame of her invest invincible father belt. Sure, your father, Manfred von Karma, didn't lose a single case for 40 years as a prosecutor. However, I wouldn't say he was invincible. What are you talking about? The group I'm on the trail of is a little more troublesome than most. The smuggling route we found that this time is only one sliver of this big picture. Sounds like a dangerous assignment. You really don't have to worry. I can take care of myself. Yes, I suppose you can. Plus, there's another agent on this case with me. Oh, another agent. He's a star among Interpol agents and has the highest successful arrest rate. Who knows, you may even run into him one day. Hmm. I was simply caught up in this one case. I hardly see why we would cross paths. I suppose. But I doubt he would say the same. I'm not following you. You'll understand soon enough. The flight has only just begun, Miles Edward. I'll be back in this country soon enough. And when I am, you can be sure I'll pay you back in full. Dude's gonna end up being a murderer. And just like that, she's gone, huh, sir? Thank goodness. I can finally rest easy knowing I won't have to watch out for a whip. Detective Gumshoe, I want you to thank you for all I want to thank you for all your help and consider cooperation. Well, it's nothing, sir. I was just uh, really happy to be able to work with you again. Ho ho. I think I'm gonna celebrate by adding a little extra salt to my instant noodles tonight. Just how much did you cut how much did you cut his salary by my Francisca? Detective, I was wondering if you might give me a ride down to the prosecutor's office. Oh boy, we're gonna do shit. Sure thing, sir. I'll even fly down the road in the patrol car if you want. Don't make me remind you, Detective, safety first. Thus, I solved the first case upon my arrival home. Francisca von Karma, the smuggling route she was after. The leaders of that ring had already put their trump card into play. And the players on the other side of this war. They would begin to make themselves known through the next incident. Hmm. Edgeworth speaking. Ah, finally, I called, uh, I called who knows how many times earlier, but I couldn't get through. Who are you? Ah, have you forgotten my voice, Miles, my boy? Yes. Huh. Mr. Amano. Ernest Amano, correct? Ah, so you do remember me. I know it's rather sudden, but I can't ask this of anyone else. There's been an incident, uh, incident Miles. My son, he's been ki kidnapped. Oh boy, kidnapping. That's gonna be something to worry about. Brand new episode, the kidnap turnabout. Good times. I'm sure it's gonna be really fucking weird. Give me. March 13th at 10, 11 a.m. Mysterious area. Give me some of that fucking mysterious area. Good to hear. Now make sure you don't lose sight the good side of him. I'm counting on you for backup. Oh. You can count on me, sir. That's the first part. I have to go. The kidnapper is supposed to contact me soon. Who would have thought that upon my return, I'd be thrust into a kidnapping case? And then I would be the one who would have to make the ransom drop off. Let's see, I checked that money is all there, safe inside the suitcase. I love that he's using the fucking terrible bag. Now all I have to do is await further instructions from the kidnapper. Which I'm expecting to be transferred to my cell phone. I wonder who else is around. This is the meeting place after all. Ooh. 
What the fuck? Welcome to Gatewater Land. Mm, no, thank you. And a big hello to you on the Proto Badger. Nice to meet you. Hmm. <sighs> Excuse me, but were you perhaps thinking of taking a picture of me? A picture of you. Sorry, but I'm not interested. Oh, that's too bad. Well, have a good day. Fucking homeless people. Hello. Who are you? You're not Ernest Amando? Uh, Amano? It sounds like the kidnapper using some sort of voice alternation device. And I'm his representative, Miles Edgeworth. Are you a cop? No, I'm a prosecutor. I know what you're wondering. And yes, I have brought the ransom money with me. I see. And that guy's uh, bring the money with you to the stadium. So this person intends to see if I'm being followed. Huh. Please, Detective Gumshoe, I really need you to come through for me this time, one time. Edward speaking. Next, count it on it out. And just how long do you tend to have me wander around for? That's for me to decide. You don't have much of a choice here, my friend. I suppose not. I've arrived. Go inside. Fucking spooky. Hmm. What a dismal place. That's it. Go through those doors. Am I being watched from somewhere? Leave the money and go now. I was hoping for an exchange, but maybe I should do as they say for now and not push it. I couldn't catch even a glimpse of the kidnapper. Perhaps I should keep an eye on this haunted house until police backup arrives. That thing better not start fucking moving, by the way. No! Turn around. Turn around! Ah! It was a trap! That's why you stand next to the wall. That guy betrayed. No, it can't be. Then the deal. Who is that? What are they talking about? Split. Police! Alright. In front of, meet up. I can't move my body. I fear I may be... I may fade again. <laughs> what the fuck does that goatee do? Where am I? How long was I out? It wasn't raining like it was when I... Like it is now after... When I made the drop off. This was supposed to be a simple affair. So why have I been taken hostage as well? I can only assume Detective Gumshoe lost sight of me at some point. You fucking useless piece of shit. The only reason I agreed to be the drop-off man was because of that phone call. It was from Mr. Ernest Amano, the director of the powerful Zaibatsu, the Amano group. But aside from that, I also owe him a great debt of gratitude. His only son, Lance, has been kidnapped. Lance Amano. I know that Lance is already in his 20s, but I guess some things that you never grow out of. Uh, I can't sit around waiting for someone to come help me. I must escape somehow. What was that making a funny sound? 
It was there. How dare you laugh at a gentleman's plight. What? <laughs> what the fuck? Who are you? Are you one of the kidnappers? Kidnapper? Me? No way! I'm not into such petty crimes. Nope, I'm after something much, much bigger. Ugh, oh, we must have worn out from the Torday's ordeal. Focus, Miles. Oh, I forgot to introduce myself. Sorry about that. Ahem. Even in the depths of the night, even no other bird dares to take flight. You better not fucking rhyme. One alone so soars to shine the light of righteousness on the world's blight. And that one is me, for I am the great thief. Whatever. Great thief. Did she really just claim to be the Yata Garasu? Whatever. Oh, but my real name is Kay Faraday. Gay. You can't call me Kay, Kay? Okay? Glad. Good. Glad that's settled. Okay. <laughs> not quite I have... <laughs> not quite. I have a mountain of questions for you. But first, if you would be so kind as to remove these ropes. Hmm. I wonder. Should I remove them? I was actually having a lot of fun watching you make those silly faces. Hey, there's no need to give me uh, all, uh, get all mad and icy glary on me, you know? This rope goes through here. There you go. What a relief, I owe you my thanks. And it's okay. You can pay me back in full later. Now then, what question should I start with? Unfortunately, I can already tell nothing is going to be easy with this cheeky girl. Let's start with the first one. You call yourself a great thief, yet are you really a thief at all? And she has actually that little pendant on her. You doubt me? I get it. You think that a young lady like me couldn't possibly be such a big time thief, right? That's not the part I have a tough time believing. <laughs> I'm the real genuine thief thingy, you know? Yep, I'm a pure blooded great thief. It's a little something I inherited from my predecessor. In that case, you wouldn't mind if I arrested you then, right? <laughs> what? Of course I'd mind. I haven't stolen anything yet. <laughs> yet? Yeah. Seriously, I don't know how you can say such a horrible thing to your savior. That's true. Technically, she hasn't stolen anything in front of me yet. When you say you're the thingy, do you really mean you're the thingy? Yep. The most righteous of the righteous. The legendary great thief. But the title was only recently seceded to me. So I haven't had a chance to see anything yet as the second one. I was not aware that thieves could pass down their titles like that. But don't worry, I've got some big plans in the work. Big plans, huh? They wouldn't happen to lead to a big arrest, would they? I knew it. There's not just no reasoning with a prosecutor. I'm not the problem here. I'll have you know that the whatever has no interest in stealing petty trinkets. There's one thing and only one thing I want to steal. Only one thing. What would that be? And that's going to have to wait until we find out our way out of here. Find our way out of here. Well, at least there is one thing we agree on. I'm sure I'll have plenty of time later to learn more about you. Hmm. So, you never told me what your name is, Mr. Prosecutor. No, I guess not. Miles Edgeworth. Ha <laughs> ha! Now I remember! How can you remember something I just told you? But she sure is cheery. Alright then, Mr. Edgeworth. Let's get out of here. <laughs> wow, I thought this door would have just opened. It would seem that we are locked in from the other side. What? No way! I don't hear you! Okay, <laughs> <laughs> you do remember where you came in from, right? Looks like that might be our only way out of this room. Oops. <laughs> Slight miscalculation. It's a good height to make an entrance from, but I can't jump that high to make an exit. <sighs> I suppose we have no choice but to look around and see if we can't find another way out. Isolation. God fucking damn it. 
<sighs> Stop trying the door. Can I just give her a fucking... What the hell's that? Present this. Here you go. Hey, don't you think you're getting out of out of here is more important right now? You can ask me about that later. I suppose she's right. This one. <laughs> you're under arrest. Wait, do I have profiles on her? Yeah, I do. Self-reported great thief. She apparently uh, suddenly appeared, but why is she stalking me? I don't know. Fucking <laughs> goatee, dude. 